A lot of people voted for me to talk about dogs and folklore, and everyone seems so eager about it. I'm only going to do like five-ish today because those top ten videos take a lot of work. So on the subject of folklore and legends, I'm not a superstitious person. Though, I hear if I hear one noise in a house that's supposedly haunted, I'm running out of there screaming. And aliens probably exist. And I'm not convinced Bigfoot isn't real. I'm a very super superstitious person. I'm, but if there is a, complete, a completely logical explanation for something, then I'll believe that, and that's why I don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster anymore. I may give a slight explanation for a few of these legends, because some of them can just be explained by someone exaggerating an experience with a stray dog. I will be as respectful as possible. Alright, number five, the Okuri Inu. The Okuri Inu is one of the Japanese yokai. There are many stories from different regions of Japan, and some stories have it be a wolf instead of a dog. The Okuri Inu is said to follow people who walk the mountain paths at night. If they trip and fall, they are immediately eaten. The person is allowed to have a brief rest, but apparently it's important not to seem too tired. Once the person reaches the end of the trail, they are supposed to say something along the lines of goodbye or thank you for escorting me. Then the animal will stop following them. If it follows the person to their home, then the proper thing to do for the person to do is to wash their own feet, give thanks to the Okuri Inu, and reward it with a gift and then it will leave. These gifts can be food or in some stories the person will give them give uh, the give it one of their uh, sandals and they throw it like a like it's a toy one story tells of a woman who went into labor during her journey and many okuri inu gathered around the woman said well if you're gonna eat us then get it over with they instead protected the mother and child from the wolves that lived on the mountain and guided her to back to her husband who then rewarded the okuri inu with the red rice that that was reserved for uh, special occasions the common theme in all of these stories is that they won't attack the person if they show don't don't show any uh, weakness such as fear or, or exhaustion. So a lot of these can probably be explained by it being a stray dog that following following someone around. The stories didn't seem too supernatural to root out the possibility that it was just a dog. And apparently, the Japanese wolf was known for having a uh, trait of following humans in order to monitor them. So it probably was a wolf in the stories where it was described to be wolf-like. Number four, black dog and folklore. The black dogs are kind of a collection of English folklore and include more well-known stories such as the Hound of Baskervilles. So we all know that the English felt that black things were evil and demonic, such as black cats. In the case of black dogs, they are often described as being very large and having a demonic glow in the eyes and sometimes around the mouth. Here are a few quick stories. A man who lived in a farm in Aylesbury went to milk his cows at night and one night he saw a black dog. Every night after, he brought his friend out there with him for safety. The next time he saw the dog, he tried to attack it with his milk bucket, but it fled as soon as he, he tried. The man then took a nasty fall and was left mute and paralyzed for the rest of his life. The black dog of Bully was said to be a large dog with a chain around its neck that was... that was said to uh, have appeared before... Uh, Storms arrived. The dog never actually attacked anyone, but it was enough to make people stay indoors. Evidently, this story was actually made up to keep people indoors in order to cover up a smuggling operation at the pier. Jinkies! Another variation is a black, black dog known as Padfoot. Like the black dog of Bully, the Padfoot was, a, was large and had a chain around its neck and was thought to be a death omen. The Padfoot was a different by also being able to turn invisible, having a howl that was unlike any animal, and a white one had been poked by a stick, but the stick passed through it as though it were intangible. The person who tried poking it with a stick fell ill and died. 
The Padfoot is also said to be very violent and is said to attack those who try to speak to it, try to speak to it or harm it. There's also a reference in Harry Potter to the Padfoot. It's the nickname of the character Sirius Black because of the dog form that he takes. Most of these stories seem to just be exaggerations of counters of stray dogs or just flat out made up. 1500s England was a very superstitious time, filled with witches and black cats. Stories ran, ran rampant and so did paranoia. Number three, the Shalotl. I apologize I'm saying it wrong. It took me a while to master saying Sholo eats queenly, and I'm assuming my pronunciation of the Sholo part of the uh, Shalot Shalotl name is correct. Um, unlike others on the list, the Sh Shalotl is a god. He is the Aztec god of fire and lightning, as well as twins, monsters, misfortune, sickness, and deformities. He is the twin of the god Quetzalcoatl, and the soul guide of the underworld. Shalotl is thought to have two spirit, anim spirit animal forms, a Sholoitz Quintly and an Axolotl. It's for this reason that the Sholoitz Quintly is used as a companion in this life and the next, and would be sacrificed to accompany their masters in the underworld. Twins were thought to be monstrosities in Mesoamerica, and the people would, would often kill one, one of the children shortly after birth. It is believed that Xolotl was the sacrificed twin, and that is why he stays in the underworld, and Quetzalcoatl was the surviving twin who was allowed to stay in the sun. I have to say, Xolotl is probably one of my favorite gods now. It's interesting to learn how he, he, they uh, viewed twins as unnatural, although it does leave me wondering something. How did the Aztecs decide that it was unnatural for humans to have more than one child at a time, but it was okay for to have Sholit's quaintly litters that probably had around six or seven puppies? I mean, often in nature, uh, twins don't usually survive, so I'm guessing hard times usually came when a person had tried raising a twin. Twins. Uh, nevertheless, this was an interesting god for me to learn about. Number two, the Shug Monkey. Technically, I could have placed it with the black dogs at number four, but I felt like it was different enough, and the Shug Monkey, and Shug Monkey is fun to say. The Shug Monkey is a creature that looked like a combination of a monkey and a dog that haunted the, a street called Slough Hill Lane. It's described as having a body of a jet black uh, sheep dog with the face of a monkey with glaring eyes. It's been said that it may choose to shuffle a tine leg on tines, a tine legs or move on all fours. It evidently had not been spotted since before World War II. One person had reported that the creature was ten feet long, and that it was backed. It was backed up years later by a separate sighting in the similar area. This sighting claimed the shug monkey could take multiple forms and it turned into a gargoyle and flew away. So considering that sightings have been relatively recent, I'm gonna say it's probably a stray dog or something. I don't believe the gargoyle thing at all because it's not consistent with other reports. And the part about it shuffling on its hind legs and it being 10 feet long makes me think it's a bear. 10 feet long is probably the size of a tiger, so I doubt the animal in that description was a dog. I'm sure some sightings of it were either weird-looking bears or stray dogs. There are a lot of dog breeds that are supposed to look like a combination of a monkey and a dog. Some examples include the Affin Pincher, the Brussels Griffon, and Pugs, though none of them are sheepdog-sized. It might be a mix that had like a long coat with a brachycephalic face. I also couldn't find any stories that said why people thought it was a spirit or a demon that haunted the road. I mean, other than the gargoyle thing. Like I said, superstition and par paranoia. Can't even find anything saying why it's scary. Number one, the Pesanta. The Pesanta is a giant dog, or sometimes a cat, of Catalan le legend. It's said to be black and hairy, with steel paws with holes in them so they can't take things. 
The Pesanta is said to live in churches and enters homes at night by going through keyholes or sliding underneath doors. It then lies down on people, a person's chest while they are asleep to make it difficult for them to breathe or move. If the person wakes up, the Pesanta will escape the house before they can even see it. This, some ways to avoid the Pesanta is to spread millet, millet or whatever that is, at the threshold of your bedroom, keep a broom near your bed, or say words to make the creature count all the stars in the sky. The Pesanta has been linked to, with sleep paralysis, which describes similar feelings of stillness in bed or hallucinations. I don't know. Guy might be half Pesanta. He, li- he lies. He's lied down on my chest on numerous occasions. I'm guessing it started from people having sleep paralysis and then hallucinating over shadows in their house. I do like this legend because it doesn't kill anyone. It just lies down on their chest. It's just annoying to the person trying to sleep. So there are some dogs from folklore and mythology. My next video will be about can- the canine sense of smell. It will mostly have some impressive stories about their sniffers rather than the science behind it all. I'll also take requests for videos. If there's a specific dog-related topic you want me to talk about, let me know. Watch out for stray dogs and have a fantastic day.